Hello. Back up, back up, back up. Hello and salutations. Salutation. Probably shouldn't say salutation. And I shall just say, hey guys and girls, like I usually do. So, hey guys and girls, what is up? I am back and we are doing a game pickup video for you guys today. Epic fail, Trent. Epic fail. So for those people who don't know how this works, I pick up a whole bunch of games. I have a series called Game Pickups. It's pretty much what it says on the tin. I pick up games, play them. If I love them, I keep them and play them through. If I don't, I trade them in and get something else. And this is also a really great way for me to do blanket reviews. So instead of doing individual uh, full-fledged reviews, I can do quick reviews where I can do general summations where I can give my thoughts and opinions about a game there on the spot. So, really great way for me to kill about eight birds with one stone. So, I'm a lazy person. Very lazy. Okay, and on with the video. Uh, the first game that I picked up, we're going by platforms here. I have a couple of PS4 games. I'm not going to show the one which I talked about about two videos ago. You already know what one that is. Uh, anyway, the first one I have is 2033 Redux and Metro Last Light combined they make Metro Redux. Now this is really really amazing. Um, if you watched my last gaming pickup video which I made about uh, three months ago, um, Metro Last Light, I, which I mentioned in that video, was one of the first games which really captivated me just from an environment perspective. Just when it comes down to the verse and the fictional world that they created. And it has a sort of Fallout-esque slash Bioshock feel to it. So if that floats your boat, I reckon you'll really like the Metro series. Now, I've never played Metro 33 before. I am playing this first because I have finished Last Light already. Fantastic game. When I talk about Metro Last Light, I haven't played Metro 2033. You get the point. Really fantastic series. The story is really, really complicated. So if you wish to, you know, get your hooks into the story, I would recommend doing a bit of research, even possibly reading the novel which these games are based on. Now, Metro 2033, from what I've played through so far, isn't too much of a stretch from Last Light. It pretty much starts and feels the same way as, Met <clears throat> as Metro Last Light. Um, so I'm not too sure how different it is, apart from stories and certain characters. But I am still enjoying it nonetheless. I do think the environments in 2033 are a bit stronger than in Metro Last Light. Um, but I have yet to go back and finish it. Um, I will finish this probably tonight. Really fantastic. And I've got a poster over here as well. Maybe I'll show you. I'll include like a picture or something so you can see what it looks like. Because I am a twat and I like showing off. Okie dokie, and the next one we're moving on to is Tomb Raider, the Definitive Edition. Now, I do own the 360 copy, I finished it about two times on Xbox, and I have finished it twice on PS4. Now, I really like the new reboot, a lot of people doubted that this would live up to expectations, thinking it would be more of a Uncharted clone. Um, I really like this game. The only thing that ever so, ever so slightly put me off was Lara's characterization and her story arcs. I didn't quite believe that it lived up to its full potential. Now if you look at other survival uh, games such as The Last of Us in particular, you can see that The Last of Us done survival so much better than Tomb Raider, but it still was a pretty good effort nonetheless. Um, the only reason why I didn't like her characterization as much is because it just felt very generic. It just felt very slapstick in parts. But apart from that, the environments in the game, the graphical presentation, uh, the new effects in this version, the way Lara looks quite different now, her face and skull shape have been changed, hair effects, particle, uh, particle effects, flame effects, um, everything has been touched up really, really well in this version, so um, I wasn't too bummed out that there weren't too many PS4 games at the time, and I was quite happy to play this again. So yeah, I would recommend getting this if you have a PS4. From what I understand, this version is superior to the Xbox One version purely based on the frame rate, which is a lot better than the PS4 version, so yeah, I have finished this twice. I don't think I'll go back and play it for quite some time, but really nice add to the collection. Next one I have, ah, oh, sorry, I've got like a really crook back, ah, uh, ah, oh, fucking lazy. Anyway, I've only got one PSP game, and I haven't collected anything on the PSP in quite some time, and I picked up um, Assassin's Creed, but, uh, blur. <laughs> 
Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. I need to stop talking so fast. Really, I do. Um, now, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan, even though I still haven't finished Black Flag. I know I'm going to get a lot of people smacking me through the screen right now. I will finish it. I'm about, mm, about 80% through. Anyway, um, this harkens back to Assassin's Creed 1, so if you like that time period, uh, if you like the Crusader period, um, you might want to pick this up if you have a PSP. I'm not too keen on the controls in this version, obviously because the PSP is quite limited in what it can do. So I've barely gone past the one hour mark on this game and I was actually bored as hell. Environments weren't too particularly good, but it's a PSP, uh, PSP game which is expected, and if they did do some sort of HD port in some version, um, I would gladly pick it up along with Liberations because I haven't played that either. So yeah, really nice game to add to the collection, but it's more of a trophy than anything. I'll just be adding it to the collection, just so it can be part of the collection, and not necessarily play it. Don't judge me, I got it for $2. Okie dokie, so I've got a few um, Xbox 360 titles to get through. And the first one I've picked up is Rage. Now, Rage has been flying under my radar for quite some time. I've always wanted to pick it up. I really like the post-apocalyptic setting that it's portrayed in. Um, I don't know. This one's really, really funny. I don't know how to describe it. It sort of has a, yet again, a Fallout feel. Um, it's a first-person shooter, but there are segments in which you can drive uh, motorbikes and other such um, vehicles and you explore different parts of it's more a, it's like a desert I don't know how to describe this game there's so much facets to this game but I really like it I really like the first person shooting more than the driving segments driving segments are more they seem more superficial than anything it doesn't really add anything exciting to gameplay it's something just to pass the time maybe? I'm not too sure. Anyway, what I really loved about this is that um, the combat is really really fluid. Uh, visuals, impressive. Very very impressive looking game. Love the look of it, love the feel of it, the gameplay is really solid, shooting mechanics top notch. Not a whole lot I can complain about. Um, so if you want to do a bit of a detour, if you liked uh, said games such as Fallout Bioshock, you might find this one a little bit appealing. And I have yet to finish it. And I'm sure it's multi-disc as well. One, two, three. Yeah, three discs. So without a doubt it pushed the graphical envelope to some extent. So I will finish this probably next weekend when I have more time. Because I've got better things to do. Okay, and the next Xbox 360 game I have, or the last one I should say, is a collection. And it's called the Shooter Collection. And I solely picked this up because it had Bioshock 1. And I did mention in my last pickup that I wanted a physical copy of Bioshock 1 which I have now and this also comes with Borderlands which I have never played before so yeah good deal I got it for like $8 which is hard to go by uh, now Bioshock 1 is still my favorite Bioshock Infinite is about this close behind this close uh, the reason why I love Bioshock so much is because I'm just happy when I go back and revisit Rapture it's just I don't know it's it's quite morbid Rapture isn't exactly a place where you'd want to go during the game anyway, I think before all the shit happened, Rapture would have been a really wonderful place to live in. Away from people, under the sea. Sorry, I'm losing myself there. <laughs> anyway, th there's nothing that I can do that, or nothing that I can say that would do the Bioshock series justice. It's really fantastic. I've played through it about five times now, and every time I play through it, I love it more and more and more and more and more. Um, and Borderlands, sorry, I almost forgot about Borderlands. Pretty cool. I really like the art style. Um, from what I heard, Borderlands 2 is a lot better, but I thought it'd start off and play Borderlands 1 first. Um, so it's RPG, first person shooter, um, cell shaded graphics, um, what else do I remember from the game? Sub quest galore, um, fighting little menial enemies, you know, blah 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 blah. So that's basically what Borderlands is to me two hours after playing it. So. I don't know, maybe I'll have a new appreciation for it once I finish it and put a bit more time into leveling up my characters and everything like that. So yeah, really happy that I got the shooter collection and yeah, two games for the price of $8 or did I say 12 I can't remember. Who cares? Okay, now we are moving on to PS3s and there's quite a few to get through. One, two, three, four. 
which is not a lot. Uh, first game I picked up was Resonance of Fate. Now, if you live over in Asia, I believe this is called um, End of Eternity, I believe. I prefer End of Eternity. I don't know why. Now, this game is really bizarre. It's really... Um, it's sort of like... It's a traditional, it has traditional RPG elements, uh, western gunplay, gameplay. Oh, I'm really struggling to decipher this one. It's, it's really hectic, but at its core it's mainly a shooter game. A shooter game based on RPG elements, so if that sort of sounds intriguing you might like this game. But god, this is one of the most confusing, one of the most difficult high learning curves I've ever experienced in an RPG before. Really tough game to get the hang of, but once you do, really fun stuff. Um, the shooting mechanics are really outrageous, over the top. Um, something that I can see Suda51 picking up on, maybe. Maybe. I'd like to see Suda51 take some sort of direction like this. Um, really unique premises, interesting characters. Um, graphics are a little bit outdated especially when concerning the dungeons and some of the environments, but really, really compelling and very reward, uh, rewarding as well, once you put the time into it. So, yeah, if you're looking to kill about 50 hours and you want to play something different in the RPG arena, this might do it for you. Just, God, you're going to be swearing a lot. I swore a lot in that game, and there's a lot of game modes. Okay, moving right along. Why am I doing this? I look like a shithead. Anyway, we have the... Ooh, you didn't expect me to get this, did you? Ooh. Now, I got the Metal Gear HD collection. Fuck! <laughs> Let's share that part again. I had to think about the title, I forgot what it was. Uh, now this is the same sort of problem that I had when I bought the Splinter Cell HD collection, or the Tomb Raider HD collection is that I have problems just sticking to one game. I go back and forth. Um, I, I have sadly not finished one of these games yet, um, on this disc anyway. Um, I am about three hours through on Sons of Liberty, and I have finished um, Snake Eater before, so I do know a bit about that game. I've never played Peace Walker, so didn't even ask me if I enjoyed it or not. Um, yeah, something I really need to put more time into and finish, because I do like the Metal Gear Solid series. It's just really, really, really... Uh, you have to play each of the games to understand what's going on and to understand the lore behind it. So, I think I might have to go back actually and play Metal Gear Solid 1 and then move on to Sons of Liberty and then Snake Eater and then maybe Metal Gear Solid 4. You get the picture. Uh, second to last game I have is Wet and Wet is very strange. Um, in good ways and negative ways as well. Now, Wet is very similar to, uh, it feels very Grindhouse. Uh, anyone familiar with Quentin Tarantino's work, such as Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, and Glorious Bastards, uh, you might find the style of this game quite enticing because it does contain a very 70s retro feel. Uh, it's very over the top, it's very gore heavy, uh, a lot of expletives used. Um, I wouldn't say it's a very good game though. I have played it through for a few hours, um, quite a few years ago, I never finished the game. And I always found the character, main character here on the cover, Ruby Malone, quite fascinating. I actually drew a picture of her as well, which I'll include in this video if I get time to edit. And this game had a lot of promise, but uh, it was just let down by really clunky mechanics. Really, really clunky, basic mechanics, and it just feels very unwieldy in parts. Which is a shame because uh, the gameplay is really fun, it's energetic, it's over the top, it's sadistic. Yeah, so if you like the grindhouse, Quentin Tarantino feel to movies and games, you might want to pick up this one, but um, yeah. Oh, and this game is really hideous as well. <laughs> the graphics are really, really shitty. Um, I'm not one for graphics, but the graphics are really, really shitty in this game, so buy at your own risk. And the last game I have is one that I've been wanting to try because I loved the anime so much. And the anime wasn't very long, it was only about six episodes long, I think. And that game is Afro Samurai. Now, really fantastic anime, very gory, um, very graphic, but very awesome as well. I really loved the anime. Um, I've watched it twice through already. Now the game is a slightly different story. It, 
mm, I don't know, I haven't put enough time into it, so all I can say is that it feels like I'm watching Afro Samurai again, but the controller's in my hands now, so uh, I'll let you know, you guys know how I feel about this once I put more time into it, but I really love the, um, the anime of this. Really excellent stuff. So I believe that is it. I'm just checking to see if there's any more games tucked away, but I'm pretty sure I got them all. Yep, I gave them all the spotlight that they deserved. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys wish to tell me what games you'd like me to pick up, uh, do you guys have any recommendations? I'm not incredibly wealthy, but I will try to do my best to pick up games based on your recommendations. I hate rich people. So, yet again, thanks again for watching this video. I shall see you probably next week. I'm going to try getting back into the habit of doing one video per week. Um, so, until then, keep safe, guys, and I shall see you there. Remember you soon.